Truman, there's a tool for that. Whoa, when did they come out with these, Calvin? A day after they came out with these. It's hammer time on Tech, Tech Tuesday. Tuesday. Now remember, a big part of the hammer time is things getting struck, things might get flying around, a lot of force going on, and that means Safety glasses are on. Now we're ready to have some fun. So before we get to our specialty hammers, we're gonna go back and look at some of the earlier models. Yes, not such a joke. No. A hand hammer, the problem with this one, the surface is not consistent. Mm. It's not really giving me any leverage, it's directly tied to my hand. And the rock is still, again, no joke because the material matters. That's an important thing we're gonna see when we look at our specialty hammers here. This is a fun little one, as we say, get your cobbler on. Mm -hmm. It's precise, it's small. So this one, we're not doing this with our massive shoulder here. You're choking up, you're doing this. It's gonna dent, it's actually intended to be soft, so that, and heavy. So you get that impact with it, the side plastic. So a nice specialty hammer. And next we have the dead blow hammer. Dead bull hammers, inside the head, it's hollow and it has material in there. Sometimes beads or kind of a bearing, sometimes there's sand, sometimes there's just a weighted piece that moves back and forth. All that material is back here, and then once it hits, the, hits what you're hitting, it moves mm -hmm. and counters that action of when you hit it so it doesn't bounce and it keeps it planted. Whatever energy we hit with, it's coming back. Now, we can simulate that a bit with our technique on the mallet while we're talking yep. dead blow. So a non-dead blow. Here, you bring the hand down and stop. It's not this, this. Down and stop, down and stop, down and stop. Dead blow, Yep. technique. So one common hammer, a lot of people have is the claw. This one from shipping. Here it's for the nails. And we're gonna look at this because I want you to consider all the household work you do to be training for work on the bike. So here we are choking up. We are choking up, setting the nail. We are coming back. We are swinging further. And if I am off, I'll know it. So train for use with our bike tools. The little HMR8, the bigger HMR4. Do you need both? If you're traveling, I want this one. If you're at home, this one has a lot of uses. You can choke up on it and make it seem like a smaller hammer. That's right. And you can make it into a really big hammer. And when you're on the road in the traveling box, it takes up less space. But when you've got to smack something, you better get on with more force. This one's got gouges. Why, why would that be? It's a softer material and that's an intention. That's, mm -hmm. that's its whole purpose. So that it, it, will, it will dent, gouge, mm -hmm. um, move around, displace, and the part that you're striking will not. That's right. Let's look at some of the things that we would be hitting with our hammer. Punch. Now transfer the energy through a punch. So a punch here, we may be tapping a oh, lot of bike, sometimes bearings. Mm -hmm. We're coming from the backside here. Starting small, getting bigger if we need. But bike-wise, let's look at some bike-wise things. This, bottom brackets. Yep. The press fit bottom brackets, they need to be removed just like every other bottom bracket. So, so we've got a few different tools that work. Put this in, hit it with a hammer, pushes it out the other side. You got it. Similar for your PF41s, your mm -hmm. so-called Shimano style, pounding it out. But also, sometimes on. You have mm -hmm. to get it on. Forks. Yep, put that crown race on. On the top of uh, the crown of your fork, there is a race, crown race. And this is a tool to set it in place, mm -hmm. which needs to be impacted. It's an interference fit. That race is smaller than the fork. It has to be tapped on squarely. That's what that does. The choice of tools is important, but also the technique. 
If you're working up really high, you're really not using any of your body leverage and any good effect. So we'd want to get our work down low. Now we're striking where it counts. The other part about being really far up high is you have not a ton of control over it. So That's you're right. these, you might not hit what you're trying to hit. Hey Truman, let's go hit a bike. Let's go, Calvin. Actually, a pretty common use of a hammer is removing these modern two-piece cranks. Very common here, we have the self-extracting arm. It is removed. And here we are. I try and pull and pull this way. It's sticky just from crud and dirt. Let's influence it. So we've got the spindle and then the shaping of the spindle is extremely important um, for the interface between the crank arm and that spindle. So we don't want to mess it up. So we're going to use the mallet side of the hammer so that plastic doesn't mar the spindle. And we're gonna hit it nice and square. We're gonna choke up on the hammer so we don't have as much power as if we were back here, because if we hit it like this, things are gonna go flying or we're gonna overstrike. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit risky. And I'm in the outfield ready to catch. Yep, and that's another great point. When you hit something, it has the tendency to go somewhere afterwards. So you wanna be thinking about mm -hmm. where something goes. Like if you're taking a cup out, having a rag over it or under it to catch it when it comes out. Otherwise, look under the workbench. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's go for it. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. this side. A little bit of persuasion and out it comes. That's it. Now it's time to get into the bearings. The bearings on this bike are a press fit. There's no threads in there. We're going to unpress it with this race removal tool. Comes through the center, over to Truman. I'll pull that through until we feel those fingers click behind it. I like to pull it out a little extra and then push the fingers up against. Got the backfield going on. Calvin's gonna catch in the backfield there. I'm gonna take this. These take quite a bit of force. Notice I moved my hand quite a bit further out so I get full advantage. I'm gonna hit it nice and square. Here we go. Pow. The runner's safe on first because the outfielder dropped the ball. First one came. Now, my uh, turn. Uh, race mover in. Comes through, but here we have some access issues. A little rotation, which is what the stand is for. Steel on the steel. And that's why we don't play baseball. <laughs> now keep in mind, it's the assumption of most manufacturers, if you're removing these bearings, they're gonna be replaced with new ones. To remove is to replace. And just to recap what we've learned today, We've learned a little bit about different styles of hammers and when to use them and what their place is in the world. We've learned a little bit about safety. Put on your safety glasses, don't hit yourself. Think about where things are gonna be going. We've also talked about how to hold a hammer, where to hold a hammer, and how to swing on a hammer, as well as different hammer materials and what those can be used for. And we wanna thank you for hammering in the morning. And for hammering in the evening and for hammering all over this land. And thanks for joining us on Tech, Tech Tuesday. Tuesday. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed Tech Tuesdays, check out our Repair Help video library, which has detailed guides to a wide variety of common bike maintenance procedures. And of course, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest videos from Park Tool.